Let's take a look at the reaction timer as implemented on the FPGA target. I've just opened the reaction timer LabVIEW project. You'll notice that we have the Xilinx Spartan 3E starter board target. Here's the primary VI. This is the top level VI. Number of files to maintain the type definitions and global variables for the state machine controller and system interconnections. The push buttons, discrete LEDs, that came from declaring new FPGA I.O. items. There's the switch debouncer. And you'll notice a bunch of files associated with the LCD device manager. The LCD needs to work with a couple of FIFOs. These are the FPGA IOs for the LCD. And the strata flash signals are also shared with the LCD and we need those too. All right, let's open up the reaction timer. The front panel looks very similar to the desktop prototype developed earlier. Here I have my front panel indicators for diagnostics. Over here I have the main user interface, but you'll notice the push buttons are now absent. Again, this is for the Xilinx Spartan 3E starter kit development board. And I'll be concentrating on the pieces that I needed to add in order to complete the migration of the desktop prototype to the FPGA target. So one of these is the global signal called shutdown. And even though it's not uh, directly evident right now, that's to talk with the LCD device manager, which contains its own loop. This in in contrast is a local variable connected to the stop button located, if I can find it, located right here. So the local variables control all of the while loops in this top level VI. All right, the button handler now has the switch debouncers installed for the push button as well, as, or the main push button as well as the reset button. All of this is essentially the same as the desktop prototype. Here I have a little bit of difference. This is in the lights display mux. All that piece is the same. And then I've added the connections that bring the signal out to the FPGA IOs for the LEDs. Notice that I've enclosed this in a single cycle timed loop, uh, mainly because this is a purely combinational circuit. We can save just a bit of circuit resources by doing it that way. That's pretty much the same. Here we have some extra stuff associated with the LCD display handling. This section is a little bit more uh, elaborate. Might help to take a quick look at the insides of the Manage LCD Display sub-VI. All right, that sets some initial commands to the LCD FIFO in this uh, flat sequence structure. I first uh, establish some levels for the pins, configure the LCD uh, controller, and then process commands that are sent from the LCD display FIFO. Ultimately, the pins associated with the LCD controller on the development board are manipulated here. Now, what I call the companion sub-VI is responsible for formatting the information such that it appears on the LCD the way we might expect. In this case, it's translating the integer into a set of characters, which are ultimately sent out to the LCD. I also have a, another companion sub-VI that can handle characters directly. So this little... Uh, SubVI or LabVIEW node is responsible for only invoking that case structure on the first iteration of the loop. So when that's true, 
everything inside the case structure gets evaluated. So inside I have a for loop that passes uh, ultimately 16 characters out to the LCD. The first is an M, then an S. This is the M and the S on the bottom row, so that's the milliseconds. Here I have the beginning of the phrase time with the colon. And so that dumps out all the text one time out to the LCD controller. Now in this section I take the signals coming from the millisecond timer, which would be both the measured time as well as the best time, and then I alternate using this simple oscillator circuit. I alternate back and forth between sending the best time right here to the top row of the LCD, as indicated by the false constant, and then I send the best time to the bottom row, which is indicated by that true constant. And I paste this loop at about 10 milliseconds just to make the display fairly responsive, but yet not um, inundate the LCD display manager with commands too quickly. Again, I collect all of my signals together into that single while loop, and that operates the front panel indicators.